If you're a parent, you've undoubtedly had some questions about childhood vaccines. Namely, are they safe? I'm Rochelle Grossman with your latest health news. The latest medical review funded by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services found that immunizations for children overwhelmingly offer more benefits than risks. Researchers found a few serious side effects, including seizures resulting from high fevers after the MMR vaccine and a bowel condition associated with the rotavirus vaccine. They say if you have questions, you should discuss vaccinations and their safety with your child's pediatrician. A stroke is an event that occurs when blood flow to the brain is stopped or interrupted. Decreases in blood flow to the brain can cause symptoms including sudden numbness, confusion, difficulty with seeing and speaking, and abrupt severe headaches. There are two general types of stroke, ischemic and hemorrhagic. Ischemic strokes are caused by blood clots that may block blood vessels in the brain. Hemorrhagic strokes are caused by broken blood vessels in the brain that result in bleeding and loss of blood supply. Patients at risk for strokes include those that have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or diabetes. Alcohol abuse, illegal drug use, and cigarette smoking have also been linked to significant increases in stroke risk. Strokes are serious medical emergencies and can often be difficult to treat. Some strokes require blood thinners and other medications to prevent future blood clots. Others may require surgery or significant prolonged care. Post-stroke rehab is often needed to help patients overcome disabilities that result from stroke damage. The best way to deal with strokes is to prevent them from recurring at all. Eat a healthy, balanced diet, monitor your cholesterol carefully, and get plenty of appropriate exercise. Previous studies have estimated 40 to 80 percent of medical information told to a patient by a doctor is forgotten immediately. New research says there may be an easier way to help patients remember what their doctors told them. I'm Erin White with your latest health news. A recent study found that surgical patients who received a simple, multicolor medication instruction sheet before surgery were more likely to correctly follow the instructions on the day of surgery and have a significantly shorter post-operative stay in recovery compared to surgical patients who were given medication instructions traditionally. Discuss any medication instructions in detail with your doctor.
At one point or another, almost everyone gets constipated. Fortunately, most cases can be resolved with simple changes to diet and exercise. Sometimes, though, constipation can lead to complications. I'm Erin White, and this is a health feature. Constipation is a condition in which a person has fewer bowel movements than usual. In any given person, there may be several causes for constipation, including a lack of fiber, not drinking enough fluid, an inactive lifestyle, and changes to one's environment. However, constipation may also be associated with a more serious condition, such as diabetes, scleroderma, thyroid disease, multiple sclerosis, or Parkinson's disease. In most cases, constipation is acute and not likely to cause serious problems, but it can still cause complications. These may include hemorrhoids, anal fissures, rectal prolapse, and fecal impaction. Treatment options vary depending on the cause, severity, and duration of the constipation. Fiber-rich food is necessary to normalize and maintain bowel function, reducing the amount of refined and processed foods such as processed meats, cheese and ice cream that you consume each day may also ease constipation. Instead, choose foods with natural fiber like vegetables, fruits, beans, cereals, and breads. Exercise daily and ask your pharmacist if your medications can cause constipation. If so, talk to your primary care doctor to see if a change to your medication or stopping altogether is right for you. In severe cases, surgery might be needed. Biofeedback, a method that can be used to retrain the anorectal muscles, may be another possibility. Eat plenty of fiber, exercise daily, and speak with your doctor about any constipation issues you may have. Lyme disease is a bacterial infection usually spread by parasites like ticks. A common initial symptom is a bullseye-shaped rash that can show up in certain areas of the skin about 3 to 30 days after exposure. As the infection progresses, symptoms may include fever, headache, muscle and joint aches, stiff neck, fatigue. Lyme disease can become severe if left untreated and may permanently affect vision, thinking, and irreversibly damage many organs including the nerves and heart. Antibiotics are available that can successfully treat Lyme disease, including azithromycin and doxycycline. Some severe cases of infection may require IV antibiotic treatment with cephalosporins or even close monitoring in a hospital setting. Preventing Lyme disease is as simple as avoiding areas where parasites like ticks are commonly found. These include wooded areas and tall grasses. Certain animals can carry ticks with Lyme disease, so exposure to wild deer or other creatures should be avoided without proper equipment. 
Identify symptoms or have a medical professional perform an examination if you suspect Lyme disease, as early treatment usually results in better outcomes. Here is some good news for Americans waiting for a kidney transplant. Older adults who donated kidneys were not at an increased risk for heart problems, kidney disease, or dying. I'm Miranda Savioli with your latest health news. A newly published study from the University of Pennsylvania found older kidney donors did not have a different survival rate when compared to non-donors. There was no difference in rates of heart and vessel disease between the two groups, nor was there an increased risk for diabetes, low thyroid function, or osteoarthritis for older donors. However, older kidney donors did have a 53% greater chance of being diagnosed for non-melanoma skin cancer. But the study's authors feel this may be because donors might visit their doctors more often. Speak with your doctor if you are considering a kidney donation. Early detection of cancer is vital to successful treatment, and knowing the symptoms to look for can make the difference. Men are more likely to put off a doctor's visit than women, which increases their risk of missing the signs of cancer. I'm Erin White, and this is a health feature. Stomach problems such as chronic upset stomach, unexplained weight loss, frequent or constant feeling of heartburn, and constant diarrhea or constipation can be signs of colon, liver, and pancreatic cancers. Easy and excessive bruising or bleeding can be a sign of leukemia, while blood in the stools or urine could be signs of colon or prostate cancer. Excessive pain or swelling can also be a symptom of a number of different cancers, depending on the location of the pain. Lung cancer patients often report coughing and difficulty breathing. Changes to the skin and nails can also be symptoms of skin cancer. Although many of these symptoms can often be caused by other conditions, it is important to have them checked if they persist more than a couple of weeks. Speak with your doctor about cancer screenings. To get the best in trusted health and medication information, join us at rxwiki.com. Sign up for the rxwiki.com newsletter by going to rxwiki.com and clicking subscribe on the right side of the rxwiki homepage to receive the latest health news and videos delivered in a consistent and easy to understand language. rxwiki.com, for patients by pharmacists.
COPD, otherwise known as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, is a condition where the airways to the lungs are blocked from performing as well as they should. COPD may only cause mild symptoms at first. COPD symptoms include a cough that produces a lot of mucus, shortness of breath, especially with physical activity, wheezing, and chest tightness. Without proper management, COPD symptoms can become more severe and can even become life-threatening. A large portion of patients with COPD are active or former smokers. Long-term exposure to other lung irritants, such as air pollution, chemical fumes, or dust, may also cause or worsen COPD. There is no cure, but many treatments may help relieve symptoms. Bronchodilators, inhaled and oral steroids, and teotropium are safe and effective medications often used Oxygen therapy, surgery, or even lung transplants are sometimes necessary for certain patients. Patients with COPD or those trying to prevent COPD should avoid smoking or working in settings with poor air quality. A healthy diet, proper exercise, and other healthy lifestyle choices can also help prevent or manage COPD in many patients. One of the scariest moments for a parent can be seeing their child hit in the head, especially if that hit is hard. If they sustain a concussion, it's important to know some guidelines for recovery. I'm Mindy Cook with your latest health news. Guidelines were recently published to help doctors in diagnosing and treating concussion injuries in children, but the information is valuable to parents as well. Red flags to note following a concussion involve neck pain, confusion, irritability, repeated vomiting, severe or increasing headaches, and unusual behavior changes. The published guidance suggests taking your child to the hospital if you notice these symptoms. A doctor should give advice on how to manage sleep, fatigue, and social interactions. Rest your mind and body while recovering from a concussion. Multiple sclerosis, also known as MS, is a disease that affects the nervous system, especially parts of the brain and spinal cord. Nerve cells in these parts of the body begin to lose their protective myelin sheaths and become damaged. This causes many different negative effects on a patient's health. Early symptoms of MS include eye pain, 
difficulty seeing, muscle weakness, balance problems, prickling in the faces, arms, and legs, and urinary issues. Caucasian patients, women, and patients between the ages of 25 and 40 appear to be at a particularly high risk for MS. The cause of MS remains unknown and there is no cure. Certain medications are effective at slowing down the progression of MS in some patients. These include many newer drugs including fingolimod, natalizumab, and terflunamide. Physical and occupational therapy may also help patients manage MS symptoms over time. Some patients will eventually need help walking or performing daily activities. Early detection can help with the management of MS. Your physician may need to perform tests including imaging scans to diagnose MS.